reaching out to, to parents with different uh, cultural backgrounds, uh, it can mean a lot of things because it can mean um, different home culture, it can mean different religion, it can be um, just a different type of um, uh, group in your own society, I mean one that you, you are not really familiar with. I think that the best strategy, uh, which is of course not a strategy, is to be interested to be genuinely interested and of course that also needs this type of lifelong learning urge on uh, the side of the teacher so to understand that as a teacher you will become more if you learn about cultures that you don't know and if parents see that this is a genuine interest then they will be happy to contribute on their own uh, cultural differences or their own traditions there are all these um, kind of traditional things to invite the parents to bring in their national food, to bring in their uh, special traditions for a certain uh, time of the year. So instead of celebrating Christmas, let's have a look at how different cultures celebrate the shortest day, because we all know that Christmas is celebrating the shortest day, or that the shortest day is over. Um, but the, the basis is the genuine interest in the parents' background. Um, what you can do is very much dependent on the, the age of the children. When you work with small children, it's much easier to work with, um, you know, these basic traditions, how things are done in a different way at your, um, at home, at, uh, in your own uh, little community. When the children are older, you can even combine it with, with educating the parents because um, especially from, from groups where some of the parents have low education and they come with, with a le relatively le uh, low level of education into your country, um, you can organize um, ev evenings when they talk about their national uh, poets, writers, when they compare um, historical events, what happened, how was it like in your country in the 17th century, um, and it's amazing because, um, for example, when the, the English um, Revolution happened in 1640, um, East of Europe was in a feudal uh, state and they had Turkish occupation. And if you look at those, then a lot of learning can happen. Um, so basically, you can be creative and there are methodologies all over the place. But the answer for involving different cultural background parents is being genuinely curious. If your curiosity is killed, then probably you should um, check whether you are burnt out or not. Because if a teacher is not curious in, uh, anymore, there is something wrong. Uh, when it comes to parents who speak a different language from your own, it's difficult uh, because uh, in more and more contexts, you will even have students who speak a different language of your, from your own. When communicating with the parents, it's relatively easy to use the children as translators, um, but it's overused because uh, when the children are present, they should be there to express their own views and not to act as translators or translators only. Uh, so I would rather recommend to try uh, when you, you genuinely need to have a face-to-face, one-to-one type of conversation with a parent to find another parent who is fluent in both languages or to find a colleague who knows some of the other language, but not to use the child as a translator and translator only.